In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use this wonderful tool right here, Fixed Range Volume Profile. Now, where to find that is right here, where you click on the Prediction and Measurement Tools. It is about the sixth down from the top on the left-hand column. And right there, you click on the Fixed Range Volume Profile. Now to use it, um, you can go from any point to any point and it's going to measure every single candle within that area. So to give you an example, right, if we want to measure from this high to this low, right, we can go in between there and it'll give us our point of control. I'll get into that in a second. However, you don't necessarily need to do from highest to lowest in the exact point. Let me give you an example. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just go any random spot. We'll go from here to here measuring that uh, specific space and we click and as you see it'll give the entire range of that area you went through regardless of uh, where you placed your first and last point like on a Fibonacci volume is very simple it just measures whatever is in that specific range okay so let me show you how to set it up so what you want to do is right click on the dots it's the easiest way to do it click on settings and what you're going to have here on inputs, um, you know, your row layout numbers or ticks per row. And you can just see what that looks like on the left hand side. Right. I like to go number uh, numbers of row number of rows. It really helps kind of clean it up a little bit. Row size. I mean, you can do anywhere from one to a thousand, I believe. Um, you know, let's see 300 what that's going to look like for an example. So, you know. Right? The bars are just going to be a little bit thicker. So the higher the number, the smaller the bars. So if we go 700, you can see it's uh, almost minuscule. You're not able to really tell where the bars kind of end. It just looks more like lines that come across. Uh, 500 is just the setting I like to use. Uh, volume, you could split it up, up and down. So as you can see, you'll see what the high... Uh, volume is for buying and what the high volume is for selling, right? And that particular range. Uh, I don't feel the need. I need. Or I don't feel the need to have both uh, visible. I just blend them together, right? We just, regardless of it's buying or selling, we want to know where the majority of the volume was in that particular range. And value area uh, volume. I like to set at eighty, just to show you an example of what it looks like if you switch the number. Right. Not a whole lot, right? So again, just a personal preference for 80. Uh, for style, the values, you just want to make sure it's as plain to see as possible. The only thing that we're really concerned about is this POC, which stands for point of control. I like, to I like mine to be very vibrant, so I picked red. Uh, you know, if you like pink, go nuts, but just remember whatever background you use and the candle colors you have, just make sure it's something that pops and it's very visible for you. Okay, width of the box, let me show you what that does. If we switch it to 40, half that size, right, all it's going to do is shrink that volume inside there by that uh, same amount. So if we go to 100, you're just going to see that those uh, bars are much more defined, right? Whatever preference you prefer, it doesn't really matter. And as far as the colors go, I gray it all out just so you know we can see where the high points and the low points are. Doesn't really matter what color you like, just make sure it is, um, you know, they're either all the same or up to your liking, right? I prefer the gray, that's what I'm going to use. Histogram box, this is not really relevant, it's just whatever uh, the background is behind that, right? Like you could kind of see the gray outline of the box that's all that is okay so uh, don't worry about the coordinates those are not important that's all you really need to know about inputs and style and just click OK and then whatever you set it's going to be saved for future use okay now you're probably asking how do I use this tool well that's what we're gonna uh, find out right now so I like to do it on a smaller time frame just because on the daily time frame you have a lot of information and it tends to kind of draw you away from what you need to know. You need to get multiple days, but you also need to see uh, in those specific days where your consolidation is and where your uh, volatility happens, right? Your trend going from up 
to down or vice versa. So what we're going to do is click on that tool. And as you can see, right at the end of the trend, I'll just click here to here. Right? That's about one, one uh, decent consolidation range. And as you can see, the you know when I set it to 100, this is how it's going to look like. So that's why I prefer to set it to something like 60 or 80. Okay? And, <clears throat> pardon me, it's important that you set it on the left-hand side um, because for me personally, I like to know from my past going to my future, not the other way around. This way I can take you know, a very simple line drawing tool like that and just draw one horizontal line ray starting from the point that I place it, not going across my entire chart. Okay, and again, drawing the ray, switch the color to whatever you prefer. Uh, I use red as my point of control, and all these little spikes here, uh, we can call them extreme zones uh, or other, you know, secondary points of control. As you can see, the biggest one is where it spikes the highest, right? But when you have your secondary and your uh, tertiary points of control, you can set them as well because they're going to be very valid. Right? And I change them to blue just so I know that they are not my primary, but it's still a valid area to watch for. Okay. All right. Now, what the point of control does, it simply tracks where the major volume <clears throat> of that particular uh, area that you measured is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, concentrated in. Okay. So right now we can see that the lot of the volume is concentrated around this area, okay? So what that's gonna tell us is eventually what we're gonna see is our price kind of pull back into this area, okay? It's not gonna, doesn't necessarily mean that it's always gonna touch it. Sometimes it might touch it and kind of consolidate in there. Sometimes it'll just break right through, right? It's just kind of a, an anchor, so to speak, to be able to find out where your price is going to come back to or where it's possibly gonna be going. Okay, now in conjunction with that, right, if we add the Fibonacci, for example, right, where it's consolidating here, let's just draw from high to low, okay, from that high point to that low point, what we see on our screen, okay, that's where we have our Fibonacci. Now let's take the volume profile and draw it from highs going all the way to the low, right, doesn't have to be on the low just as long as it's on that same range, right, and here's our volume. Here's the majority of the volume that we have within that range. <clears throat> okay, so that's the major volume that we have. Our uh, spiked volume, I guess our secondary would be right there. And we'll just make that blue. And any tertiaries, you know, the, the third lines would be somewhere around here. But the reason I'm not going to draw that up is because we're still taking data from that first original drawing, okay? So I'll just delete that, <clears throat> I'll delete this one. And now that we've drawn all the way down, we're gonna, we're gonna take that volume profile, draw it for its consolidation, <coughs> pardon me, right? And now we see another spike right here for a point of control during its consolidated run. So I'll draw up another red one. And as you can see, other spikes right here, the secondaries, right? You can place it as well. I'm just going to place one, you know, just for the sake of time. And then the final one is our run towards um, this spot right here. Right? You can do all the way at this point, but I find that any new information right there is not going to be as valid uh, moving. Sorry, it's not going to be as valid getting information from what you're currently experiencing for the future. Um, it's better to take a couple days, even weeks of information to be able to understand where the market is headed, right? So here's another point of control that we have in that small run. Okay, and I'll just draw it red. There we go. So I'll get rid of these volume profiles. Oops, pardon me. And then we can see uh, majority, you know, majority of where the points of control are for certain time, range, time frames and the ranges, whether it was consolidating or trending. Okay, now in conjunction with the Fibonacci, where we went from highest to lowest, we can see that in specific hot zones in that uh, on the Fibonacci, right, the three two eight, the six one eight, and the seven eight, uh, the seven eight six, right, those areas in particular, they're very 
strong when it comes to retracements. And as you can see here, we have a lot of volume that's concentrated in those areas. This volume was recently formed, so that means that it is going to get there eventually, but that doesn't mean it's going to be headed there now. Okay, Very likely, now that the trend is headed upwards, right, or it was anyway, until it reached this area, right? It was headed towards this uh, volume spike, but it didn't quite reach there. It rejected off there using the 618 as a anchor. So now it started consolidating a little bit and now dropping lower. While it drops lower, now we have two areas of interest. The first one is going to be this uh, point of control that we formed through this consolidation. And the next one is going to be our 328 on the Fibonacci. So now what we see is it dropped, but it didn't quite cross here. So it is very likely to be bouncing around this area before it decides where to go. If it breaks through the 328, your next point of control is going to be this area, right? And you're going to be looking for the exact same thing if it consolidates or if it breaks right through. You know, if it breaks right through and it didn't reach these areas, these are very likely goals for you to be able to predict for your pair to actually hit. Okay, so in a nutshell, that is how you use the volume profile tool. Very useful. Um, and for, um, let's see, for the indicators, there is also one under the technicals and you go to volume profile. It's called volume profile session volume. And what that does, if you click on it, you'll actually see that exact thing drawn up, but it is drawn up on the daily range, right? So if I click on the day, we don't have any volume profiles. It only works on hours and minutes because each one of these is on that specific day, okay? So just to give you an example, here's on the one hour what it looks like, all right? And then if you right click on it, or you can click on the settings here, you can go there and uh, for your inputs, you know, your row size, you can make them higher. You can put total volume like we did in the previous one, extend point of control right. So this is very useful to see where it's crossing. And once it does cross that point of control, it basically gets erased from any future uh, uh, candles that appear, right? So as you can see right now, this one, uh, I'll just highlight them. Yeah, we'll just use a paintbrush. So this one right here, this one, and this one are ones that haven't been crossed yet, and they're very likely spots that uh, will be aimed to be reached by the pair in the near future. All right. So this is only available if you pay for trading view. All right. It's called the VPSV, or if we go back into indicators, volume profile session volume. You can use whichever one you like. That's the one I'm comfortable with. And that's the end of the tutorial. Hope you found that helpful. Hope you uh, end up using volume profiles in the future. They are a very handy tool to have in your arsenal. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like the video, and I'll see you next time.